Good to see you again. Yeah. In the body. Thank yeah. you, Esther. Nice to be seen. Yes. Usually we're just a nebulous mist. <laughs> Still funny. <laughs> Still true. Yeah. Since our last conversation a year ago, my life has unfolded tremendously beyond words. Yeah. I just want to give thanks to you, yeah. your teachings and all the teachings that I've received. Yeah. To your I, readiness to receive. That's, I have allowed that's, yeah. so much yes. that I've wanted to manifest within a year. It's unbelievable. So you're in this new place. There's this new conversation that we're going to have. What is it? Yeah. So I would like to continue the conversation and expand on it that we had a year ago and that was about spiritual masters as an example Jesus the Christ Buddha uh, Mary Magdalene other teachers of our time like Eckhart Tolle Sadhguru all the saints I just saw Amma um, for my birthday about a, a little while ago and my question is if we can talk more on what it is that these masters are living and doing to maintain their alignment with source that so many people just by looking at a picture of them or feeling them are able to feel their alignment and love in such an amazing way because my wife and i and i'm speaking for her as well work with this we call upon the christ energy your energy of abraham on a daily basis because we're teachers and healers and we're moving that through our body and so this i guess is a question about unconditional alignment and love as well for how do we maintain that more often i'm mastering step five but there's still that like when i saw ama and you see her and you just feel her there's this radiance and of this love and light of alignment and i want and i am that how do i allow that more so let's just isolate one thing that you said and talk about that for a little bit because in doing this we'll answer everything that you ask about so you said how is it that someone could just look at a picture of someone who is in alignment with source those are the words that we would use for what you were describing and then be moved or have an emotional experience just by what they are observing and this is the answer that trumps all answers forever and ever and ever and ever it isn't the picture and it isn't even the vibrational condition of the object of the picture it's the state of being of the beholder of the picture yes exactly so your question isn't what have they got that makes us all feel it's how do we get to the place of feeling what they've got yeah exactly so it's about how do i become an allower the way you do it is by looking at something and not feeling it and wanting to feel it and then looking again in other words you keep adjusting your vantage point until love is what you feel the other day esther meditated and then she met a friend who had also meditated and then they took a walk together but before their walk they went past a stream that esther has in one of her gardens and her friend said why don't we sit here and meditate together and listen to this stream and so Esther thought oh what a really good idea because she was really in that really good place she felt like she was on the brink of even feeling better and so they sat and listened to the stream and almost as soon as they sat down and began focusing a jet flew over uncommon that's not their flight pattern and then another one and then another one and then another one and then another one and for a moment Esther felt annoyance that the jet was interfering with their solitude and their sanctuary and then she thought wait a minute this is the whole point of what Abraham has been teaching us we must find a way to focus ourselves in the world as it is not ask the world to change so that we can focus and so it turned out to be the best meditation that either of them have ever had partly because they were doing it together and partly because they had to care about releasing thought in an environment where it was a little more difficult to do so what we are wanting to say to you is that if you look at a picture of someone who clearly isn't a saint and you find that love 
you are a master. It's the ability to be it even in difficult times. That's what true mastery is. That was the question that we could feel coming also is not just what is a master, but how does one become one? And it's just through practice, but at the basis of that practice must be, and we know, you know, this, you've got this is the desire to feel what my inner being knows to be. In other words, you're just tuning yourself to the perspective of the source within you, just like your source can't be dissuaded from it. You can't either. Esther said to us one day, some years ago, she was feeling bad. And she said, Abraham, I know that the reason I feel bad is because I've managed to think thoughts that have got me separated from you. So why don't you just come and think these thoughts with me for a little while? Because I can't manage to get to wherever you are. So just come and think with me. Why don't you bridge the gap for me? You lower your vibration to where I am and I'll feel so much better because there won't be any separation. And she knew we weren't going to do that. She knows that source is free of resistance and that she's got to let go of resistance and join source, not a source to join her in a lower vibration. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. So is that really what these masters have done? Is it they're and doing, they're just working on that alignment unconditional alignment their alignment is what they care about most some of them jesus you talked about jesus as the story goes withdrew from his environment and went away for a very long time and put himself in an environment where he could connect with that energy and many of you are able to do that but that's not mastery mastery is coming back into the world and still being able to maintain it you can't need to keep running off to a cave somewhere you got to be able to come out many religions they meditate all day every day well we would far rather that you're in a state of appreciation than in a state of meditation because in meditation there is a withdrawal for the purpose of allowing the vibration to rise but once the vibration is there then focus this would be our process meditate let the vibration rise move into the world and see how far you can get before you plummet <laughs> and then meditate on Monday and let your vibration rise and then go out into the world and see how far you can get and when you discover it's that same guy every damn day that brings you down <laughs> avoid him avoid him use your guidance to know what makes it easy for you to stay in alignment and what's not so easy just until you get the hang of alignment Jerry was talking about the wire walkers and he watched them he joined a circus when he was a teenager and he watched the wire walkers and they walked for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours on wires that were only a foot off the ground and then when they got on the high wire, they were secure in their ability to stay on the wire. They didn't get on that wire the first day. They would all have been dead. <laughs> and so what you do, you align and you live and you notice and you adjust. You reach for the feeling of it and you find it until you are sure in your ability to focus. That's what masters are. They are sure in their ability to focus into the energy of source. That's what they are. That's what they are. And they know the difference between the thoughts they're receiving from source and the thoughts they're receiving from worrisome streams of humanity. They can tell the difference. So about meditation, and this is part of my wife wanted to ask this question through me is she can get into a state of when she's meditating direct alignment with source and feeling you and feeling the wholeness of everything and in this place but then and it's like it feels like she can contain it but then when she holds that energy and lives in it and goes out into the world it feels too overwhelming or harder to maintain not necessarily because she's seeing this and not liking it and, and being conditional but because the energy she summoned and is allowing that feels comfortable at that time in meditation is feels overwhelming when she starts walking down the street or being around other people let's go back to the analogy that we offered earlier so let's say it's just you or your wife in this case just sitting there in a relationship with inner being that's what meditation really is quieting your mind and establishing and acknowledging your relationship with that source energy and accomplishing it and feeling it and knowing it so it's just you at the table you and your inner being at the table 
Well, when it's just you and your inner being at the table and your inner being is pure positive energy and adoring you and you're able to quiet your mind and stop railing against the things you're railing against, then there's going to be almost an immediate joining between you and your inner being. And that's what a really successful, good feeling, what we would call productive in terms of understanding energy meditation is about. It's me in resonance with my source energy. So then she comes out of meditation and she's all tuned in and now she walks into another meeting at another table with other energies. Well, it's pretty easy for you to release thought and adjust to the vibration of your inner being. But now let's say you're at a table with a whole lot of people that are in varying degrees of alignment with energy and much of the world is not in alignment with the energy at all. And so when you give your attention to where they are, without meaning to you join them in the energy where they are and you lose your connection it's what the masters discovered they walked on the wire a foot off the ground before they got on the high wire it's just about trusting your connection until in time you can be anywhere Esther likes coming to these gatherings because she knows that you are varied in your desires and you are varied in your degree of interest in subjects and you are varied in your alignment but she knows after over 30 years of these experiences of knowing it's going to be all right because Abraham's going to hold the energy of the room she knows that we come and we know and we know with such clarity that you're going to have a decent experience she knows that you're not all gonna have the same experience but she knows that nothing's gonna go crazy in this room because what Abraham brings to the room what your inner being brings to the room what source part of you brings to the room is gonna hold this in a good feeling steady productive good for you beneficial to you life-giving experience there's not going to be any mob rule going on in here because the momentum of this gathering says that it's going to be all right. And so it's just from exposure to the experience and a molding of an expectation. Did we answer that question? Because that was a big one. Oh, yeah. I, think, right. I think so. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah.